there's a lot of misconception within the community about what settings will actually get you more FPS. And the reason for that is because there is a difference in what settings will get you more FPS if you're in a CPU bound scenario versus what settings will get you more FPS in a GPU bound scenario. So for this video, we'll be going over the settings that do actually have some sort of an impact on your CPU bound performance in game. And I'll show you the numbers to back it up. Just so you know, the baseline settings for the testing are listed right here on your screen. This is what I was running during tests and then how it worked is I'd run them at stock. And then for example, if I was changing LOD quality, I would change it from stock to that given setting that will be outlined in the chart and then recorded the frame rate through a benchmark pass that I do on streets through the little strip by Lexos. So let's go there and let's uh, dive straight into the benchmarks. And also, if you're wondering why I choose resampling at 0.5 downscaling, it is to force myself into a CPU bound scenario so that I can actually get legitimate performance results based on the CPU bound data because I don't want to be hitting any sort of GPU ceiling. Okay, now that we're on streets in this glorious 720p resolution that it's downscaling to, uh, let's get to the settings that are most important to chain for CPU performance. Since I don't like to hold the data from you guys till the end of the video, I'm just going to put all of that on screen for you guys. Let me grab that. So here's the data for all of my runs on this path for the given setting. So for example, stock was the settings that I showed you at the start of this video. And then LOD2 is me switching that singular setting inside of the settings, going back out, and then running down this strip right here two to three times. So I'd run, or not run, but I'd walk down there and then turn around, run back this way, do the same thing again. And then if I do that, and I'm not sure if the results are accurate, I'll do another run where I do it three times and then check the data and make sure that there's uh, not that much run to run variance. So the numbers that you're seeing here are pretty solid, though the margin, as you saw from this, uh, from this graph right here isn't that much. You can see each one of these big jumps right here is five FPS. So you're not gonna be seeing a ton of difference between these settings, but these are the ones that I could find that were making some sort of change occur in the data. But I did uh, include a couple of ones that I knew weren't gonna make a change just so that we could rule them out. Biggest one here that you could probably see off the bat is LOD2 or level of detail. So if you guys have watched my settings video that I'll probably put in an info card right here, level of detail is the level of ha ah, that is the level of detail that's great definition sorry i have to correct myself there because i can't come up with a definition lod is level of detail and level of detail adjusting that in game affects how close objects start to turn to their lower quality counterparts so the lower the setting is the closer objects are going to start turning to 2d sprites or just lower quality versions of themselves i have heard rumors that this affects the rendering of certain optics when you are running them or iron sights when you're running them at the lowest setting. So I'll set it, I'll set it to that just so you guys can see even though it's in half rendered resolution, right? It'll take you a minute to even see any changes at all, but this will make a difference over distance, especially when it's not freaking foggy like it is 80% of the time when I'm doing my testing. Lord help me. But this was one of the biggest consistent changes that I could see in performance is with LOD set to two versus LOD set to three, which was the default one that I had it at. Now you can see in this graph as well, when I set it to LOD four, it did tank a little bit more performance off, about three frames, so not that much. It was repeatable though. So you can see the jump between LOD four and LOD two was about seven and a half FPS, which if I calculate the percentage, is about 93% of the performance. So there's about a 7% difference in performance between LOD4 and LOD2 when you're in a CPU bound scenario, specifically with these frames. So not that big of a difference, but it is one of the bigger differences that I was able to spot within all of these settings. If you are in a CPU bound scenario, I would recommend turning down LOD quality to as low as you're comfortable with. Most people recommend around 2.5 for optimum performance, and I generally agree with this number so that you're not getting too much pop in, but if you want the best performance possible when you're CPU bound, use LOD2 even if you, you know, if you don't care about the visuals, right? So the next settings here, couldn't find much of a difference at all in between all of these. You can see they're pretty much in run to run variance territory by all of these the overall visibility. Tried to, I did several confirmation runs for these numbers and they all stayed 
within the same average frame rate, barely varying out of their norm. So it's completely out of bounds that this is affecting my CPU performance at all, at least in an offline rate. Anisotropic filtering is a setting that for some reason I've seen one or two people comment that it affects their CPU bound performance, so I decided to test it too, and it wasn't really that much of a difference at all. It's definitely in run to run variance territory as well. Something that one of my wonderful shareholders in the Discord pointed out though, is that HBO and SSR might have an impact. So I vehemently defended it and stood my ground but unfortunately, to the numbers protest, it was consistently a couple frames higher. This is the average of the data. It's not, it's not that much, but it was consistently a little bit of a difference when I turned both HBAO and SSR off from the high setting that I had them at before. You can see the difference that both SSR and HBAO gave in their perspective, or in their individual runs. And these two settings combined off did create a, not a noticeable impact in gameplay, but it is a noticeable difference in frame rate. Ever so closely marching towards that margin of error territory. Binaural audio also had the same sort of effect, seeing as it was also consistently, um, the exact same number actually, I didn't even notice that, but it's the exact same number higher in on average from the stock settings that I had before after I turned it off. So I took all the settings that I noticed a impact with, which was binaural audio, HBAO and SSR, and then LOD, set them to the lowest perspectively, lowest or off, and then did a benchmark run with all of them set at those lowest. You can see that on average, I got seven FPS more with these settings set to their lowest in comparison to my stock run. That's roughly a 15% gain, which isn't too bad when you think about it. But in the span of things, this probably won't be life changing for some people. And I did sacrifice binaural audio and a lot of my eye candy to get to that level of performance. It's up to you what settings you'd like to change, but that's another way to check uh, and see, you know, which settings you'd like to adjust there. Of course, afterward, me being stupid, I realized that I also didn't test with auto RAM cleaner off. So I threw that in on the side as an extra little test here. You can see it does have a small impact on CPU performance. And with this off as well, I'm assuming this bar would go around to 115 or 116. So still a bit more different with the auto RAM cleaner off. But if you have anything less than 32 gigabytes of RAM, I wouldn't recommend turning this setting off. RAM usage was consistently a lot more with RAM cleaner off. So like I said, it's, it's your own risk if you want to sacrifice auto RAM cleaner for a couple more frames on average. Hey guys, another update here, another step in from editor me three hours after rendering the video. Just so you know, I forgot to put MIP streaming in the benchmarks entirely because I'm an idiot. If you would like to understand the impact that that can have, I do have a video which I will link both in the description and in the pinned comment on this video if you'd like to learn more. My recommendation for the sake of this video, if you are solely CPU bound, is to disable it, but I explain it more in that video, so go check it out. Now, of course, I did a little bit of online testing too, but I want to be clear that these values and this set of data is a lot harder to cross compare because the setting is constantly changing. There's constantly new things going on. And so it was really, really difficult to get any sort of concrete data from, you know, change to change, depending on what I was doing. Here is the graph that I made. Really simple. Ignore the last two data sets right here. We'll talk about those in a minute. But this right here is the FPS that I was getting with everything off on average. When I was just looking at a scene for 10 seconds, I stared directly at it, benchmarked the average FPS for that amount of time, and then changed settings accordingly to try and figure out what settings were making any difference. And the thunder's back. Why does it always have to show up in my videos? Seriously. Anyway, HBO and SSR did decrease my performance by a little bit, literally a couple of frames, so not that bad. From setting this back to the off settings, so the lowest possible settings that I was testing before in offline, I went from 74 to 65 with maximum LOD. So going from two to four LOD dropped my performance by about nine frames, which is, uh, pretty drastic drop to be honest. Most people aren't running at four LOD though. So if you're say playing at three or 2.5, dropping to two isn't gonna give you as much of a jump. These settings right here were botched. These were bad runs because these uh, tests were done with airdrops coming in. And so I couldn't get any actual data regarding this, but it was the same behavior. It wasn't, it was this FPS both uh, when I was switching the setting to the lowest and the highest and all around, it was not affecting the average FPS at all. So 
you can X these out in terms of any actual difference in CPU performance. Finally, I did a test where I ran through a scav streets with out changing these settings so my normal settings that you see in the description of my videos along with my discord and this right here on the right was what happened after i set all of them to the lowest so that included setting lod to two turning off my normal audio turning off automatic ram cleaner uh turning off hbao and ssr completely got me to that point i also had to run with dlss on quality to get to this point so that I wasn't running into any GPU bottlenecks when I was playing on streets. Pretty meager gain, honestly, in comparison. So I don't know if changing some of these settings would even be worth it, but I figured I'd put these stats out for you guys so you can make the difference for yourself. So finally, to go into the settings one last time and address what settings are most important to change for CPU performance, LOD quality is one of the most rough ones when it comes to difference. If you're having a massive CPU bottleneck, you may want to try turning this down as much as you can handle just to have that little bit of extra performance when you're in those CPU bound scenarios. Overall visibility wasn't having an effect on that CPU bind, so I'll drop that one. HBO and SSR has a very, very slight but measurable impact. And then finally, if you really want to sacrifice it, automatic RAM cleaner and binaural audio had a little bit of effect for each that you saw in that previous graph. So if you are comfortable sacrificing those settings, then you could obviously do that. Now, I know the elephant in the room is only use physical cores. Of course, I've tried that a thousand times and there has not been any sort of difference in frame rate with this setting on versus off for me. If anybody is trying to use only physical cores, I recommend trying Process Lasso instead. But with the recent issues that have been coming up with people crashing that I posted about on my community page, I don't know if I could recommend that either. It's always worth a shot though, and you can always test it offline so you don't lose anything in a kit or anything like that, but uh, still, it hasn't made any difference for me, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't recommend at least trying it out. This isn't a full CPU optimization guide for Windows and everything like that, but I wanted to specifically address settings that make some impact in Tarkov when it comes to CPU bound scenarios. There's not much, and it's not that much in terms of frame rate difference, but I figured I would lay this to rest and get this video out for you guys. Expect a video that's gonna be talking about the settings that affect GP performance as well coming in the next little while as I will dive into the benchmarks for all of those. That will take a little bit longer though because there's more settings I'll be testing for that. And of course, if you have any setting that I didn't cover in this video that you want me to check for a CPU bottleneck with, I'd be more than happy to just leave it in the comments or post it over in my Discord. But with that, make sure to like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll be streaming again tonight if I'm posting this on Friday at 7 p.m. or maybe sooner, we'll see. But it'll be streaming right here on YouTube so that you'll be able to come back on in and ask me any questions you might have regarding the testing that I did in this video or any other recommendations I have for CPU bottlenecks like Windows 10 deep loading or with Process Lasso. I'll make more videos about those specific things in the future, but I, like I said before, I'm covering the Tarkov specific stuff. So with that for now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in stream later today. This is Clem, locking out. Later.